Bitcoin is up 5% on the day after tapping a low of 59,700. I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis and quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, 220,000 in play. The mystery sovereign buyer, Abu Dhabi most likely, will soon be revealed. Let's go. We'll also be discussing BlackRock ETF close to overtaking Grayscale, despite the second lowest daily inflows, as well as markets are underestimating the long-term effects of this Bitcoin halving, according to crypto giant Bitwise. And the halving is currently scheduled to take place roughly at 2 a.m. this Saturday, roughly only a day out, fam. Make some noise for that. We'll also be discussing the 86.5 Bitcoin question. Will this halving spark a price surge this April, as well as this Bitcoin having will be no different. According to Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model, he insists the Bitcoin will surge to 100,000 per coin this year after the halving and topping 300,000 per coin in 2025. Also in today's show, we'll be discussing Bitcoin readying for a massive bull rally that can send the price action to $650,000 per coin as per on-chain analyst Willie Wu. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market, all this plus so much more in today's show. Let's go. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, important to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also equally important to smash the thumbs up because by liking this, you're going to receive more daily content from me every single day. And it helps out tremendously with the algorithm. Today is pod episode number 1613. I'm your host, JV, and it's April 18th, 2024. Very special time because we have a halving scheduled to take place at roughly at this time, 2 a.m., on Saturday, sat stack and Saturday, 420, April 20th. Let's freaking go. But check out this market, yo. Uh, we kick it off with our market watch. Bitcoin now up roughly 6% on the day, trading at roughly $63,800. Nice little recovery. We got Ether back above 3,000, up 4%. Solana up 8%. XRP up 5%. Just massive gainers across the the board and checking out coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap sits at 2.31 trillion with roughly 96 billion worth of volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance at 54.2% and the Ether dominance all the way down to 16%. My question for you in the chat, how high do you feel the Bitcoin dom is likely to climb for this cycle? Do you think we tap 60 or 70%? I want to know your thoughts. And also checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. We got Injective of 15%, followed by AKT of 12.5%, followed by Gala of roughly 12%. Below that, Immutable, DYDX, and ICP. Now, my question for the chat, which alts, if any, are you most bullish on for this bull cycle? And I did notice Dax changed their logo to the Bitcoin orange color, so respect. Now, also checking out the crypto bubbles, get more of a visual perspective, starting out on the daily, the bulk of the market back in the green, safe to say 95%, uh, percent, which we love to see. But zooming out on the monthly, considerable amount of these alts, uh, just massive corrections over the past 30 days. And checking out the crypto greed and fear index, finally, we're all the way down in the 50s. I haven't seen this in a long time. We're currently rated at 56 but still greed. Yesterday a 67, last week a 76, and last month a 79 in extreme greed. The higher this number goes, the more likely of a correction. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown as all eyes on the Bitcoin halving right now. We only got one day and nine hours away, roughly one day and 10 hours. So with the estimated halving time being at two UTC. Now, can someone decipher the difference between UTC time and Eastern time, for example, New York, because I want to know the difference there because I don't even know what UTC is exactly. All I know is in Puerto Rico right now, it's the same as Eastern time. So like, for example, it's 12, 11 p.m. here in the afternoon. So I want to know that so I can expect uh, when the halving will take place. Let me know in the chat. So we're currently at block 839,801. So we're only 199 blocks away from the official halving, which occurs at block height 840,000. And here, tech, uh, checking out the time chain calendar, you can see, again, only 199 blocks away. And every 10 minutes, we approximately get a new block. Uh, we're currently sitting on a 1.25 trillion Bitcoin market cap, and you can currently trade $1 for 1,575 Satoshis. So stack those sats 
accordingly. Crypto fam. Amen to that. But anyways, fam, we got a lot to cover. Let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Headline reads, have the alts hit the bottom. The Bitcoin price bounces 5% from 59.7, which is the new low. That's right. As you can see on the one hour chart, Bitcoin tapped 63 G's, baby, before the April 18th Wall Street open as modest Bitcoin price strength boosted the mood for the traders. 60 G's. From Trading View showed Bitcoin reaching 63,000 on Bitstamp, now up 5.5% versus the prior day's lows. So at 59.7, these represented Bitcoin's lowest levels since early March. And while various forecasts saw the need to clear liquidity at 57,000 and even far lower going forward, saw some reason for mild optimism. Now, amongst them was popular trader Rat Capital, who shared the following One of the key things to note about Bitcoin's reaccumulation ranges throughout this cycle is this downside wicks below the range lows tend to occur to trick investors into a fake breakdown, which you can see here in the black circles, before resuming into an uptrend. The chart here showed a similar Bitcoin price action as several points beginning at the pit of the 2022 bear market. And each time the price produced a local low before making significant, enduring gains like deja vu, bro. Now eyeing on-chain signals, Trader Jelly drew a similar conclusion about what they shared. Bitcoin just tested the three-day RSI 50 level at the three-day 33 uh, exponential moving average. And at the same time, referring to the RSI and 33 period exponential moving average on the three-day timeframes. Quoting them here, the last time this happened was at 38,000 earlier this year. Pretty sure the result will be similar, higher prices. Now, isn't that mind boggling? Beginning of the year, we were in the 30,000 range. Let that sink in. We're already up more than 2X family or in the 2X range. So we're just getting this party started. Uh, now, regarding the altcoin battle, uh, analyst Van de Pop, uh, he predicted sideways Bitcoin price moves will continue even after the upcoming block subsidy halving. Altcoins bore the brunt of the latest crypto market correction and could now have seen the worst of their shakeout. Quoting him here, the period of boredom for Bitcoin, which is eager to consolidate here. Overall, I'm expecting this won't change for the coming months, but I think we are at the altcoin bottom. Let me know if you agree or disagree with his sentiment. Now quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, 220,000 Bitcoin in play. The mystery sovereign buyer, aka Mr. 100, could be Abu Dhabi most likely and will soon be revealed. So he's ultimately saying soon they're going to make the announcement. We know Mr. 100 has been accumulating mass amounts of Bitcoin now hold over 60,000 BTC. He also recently tweeted, look at it as price discovery, not an invention. Ask yourself, what is money? Ask yourself, what would constitute perfect money? Now think about Bitcoin and keep thinking about until you see it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Owning Bitcoin means you are free from property theft, censorship, state overreach, and currency debasement. Do you see it yet? I can see it. 100% preach max and respect to the high priest. So there you have it. He also announced yesterday, as I covered in the show, they're going to be creating a competitive studio to Hollywood over in El Salvador. Max said he's purchasing like a 200 acre site and he was looking for a name. What do you think, Hollywood, Bitcoin Studio? What's your best guess for a name that he could potentially use to, you know what I mean, name his studio? Let me know. But anyways, keep the comments flowing. Greatly appreciate it. Let's discuss these Bitcoin ETFs. Headline reads, BlackRock ETF, close to overtaking Grayscale, despite the second lowest daily inflows. That's right. There is an overtaking in the process. BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. The iShares Bitcoin Trust iBit, slowly approaching the market share of Grayscale's Trust ETF, GBTC. BlackRock Ibit recorded the second lowest daily inflows of 25 million April 17th compared to its lowest day of 20 million worth of inflows April 9th. Despite the second lowest daily inflows, Ibit's current market share of 32% is quietly approaching Grayscale's GBTC market share of 36%. They're right on the cusp of overtaking them, which is the largest spot Bitcoin ETF holding 19 billion worth of Bitcoin. BlackRock's ETF is currently holding almost 17 billion worth of Bitcoin, which is only 2 billion short of GBTC holdings. And at the rate they're accumulating and at the rate that GBTC is offloading, only a matter of time, This could, the flipping can happen uh, this upcoming week for sure. I bet flipping GBTC for the first place is not unfeasible considering GBTC's Bitcoin holdings fell by 50% ahead of the Bitcoin halving. That's right. 90 days ago, they had almost 620,000 Bitcoin. That was on the first day of trading January 11th. And currently they only have 308,000. 
thousand. Mind boggling, right? Now looking at the accumulation patterns, BlackRock's Bitcoin accumulation slowed down since its record day, March 13th, when iBit saw 866 million worth of net inflows. Quick shout out uh, to Mark. Mark just gifted five memberships of the channel to the following, KCC, Stark, I'm sorry, Stankface, <laughs> Matt Baker, uh, the Ronald MacD, uh, username, and okay, good, you've all been blessed and hooked up with the micro strategy. Membership on the of the channel on behalf of Mark Wardlaw, uh, Wardlaw. So we greatly appreciate the support and congratulations to all the new members. Respect. Let's go. Back to the story. Now, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF holding surged over 10,000% from 2,600 Bitcoin at launch to the current 272,550 Bitcoin in which BlackRock currently controls. Again, that took them roughly three months to accomplish. Insane. Now, Grayscale's Bitcoin selling has also been slowing down since March 19th, when GBTC saw 600 million worth of outflows as its fourth largest day of outflows since inception. In comparison, GBTC outflows stood at 79 million April 17th, according to Dune Analytics. Now, cumulative ETF inflows have been slowing down since March last week, which saw over 200 million worth of net inflows into the ETFs, down from 2.5 billion in the week beginning March 11th. Now, the Bitcoin price has also been scheduled or subdued due to the slowing ETF inflows in which we know we just corrected to a new low of what, 59,700, but we just had a nice recovery. Grayscale's GBTC has been experiencing a massive sell-off, which was launched uh, since their launch of trading, introducing significant selling pressure. And I believe a part of that is due to their massive fee of 1.5 annually in which Grayscale's IBIT only has a quarter percent trading fee. And Franklin Templeton only charges 0.19%. And I think Kathy Woods is pretty low as well, like 0.25 or 0.2. If someone can clarify that for me, please do let me know. So there you go. Uh, let me know how you feel. These ETF inflows will likely continue. Holla at your boy. Let's uh, discuss our next story of the day, Bitcoin halving, which is on everyone's mind right now. And again, you can see the block height we're at and where we're heading. Let's uh, dive into this Bitcoin halving a little deeper. We discussed the latest from Grayscale. So here we go. Check it. The digital asset market tends to underestimate the long-term price impact of Bitcoin halvings, according to crypto index fund management giant Bitwise. That's right. Bitwise notes that after the previous halvings of 2012, 2016, and 2020, the price of Bitcoin in the first month went up 9%, dropped 10%, and went up 6%, respectively. However, Bitcoin skyrocketed by 88%. 100% in the first year after the 2012 halving, 285% in the year after the 2016 event, and 550%-ish after the 2020 halving. Bitcoin spot trading volumes have also grown in the year following each of the three halvings. According to the Bitwise Chief Investment Officer, Matt Hoogan, and Juan Leon, a senior crypto research analyst at the company, here's what they shared. Of course, we have limited data. We are only working with three historical examples. Still, the picture they paint is relatively intuitive suggesting the market prices and the short-term impact of the halving, but underestimate the long-term impact. The data also suggests that long-term, the halving may be conducive to price appreciation. And here it shows you the first year before the halving, the first year after the halving, and all the data that you need to know to get an idea of what may happen for this halving if you know the past is to rhyme, you know what I mean? Bitcoin's having day is currently slated for April 20th, very early in the morning, or even potentially, as we just mentioned, actually tomorrow night on the 19th, late night. And we are going to be doing a having party live stream. I highly encourage you to check it out and tap in to the YouTube channel, which could be found at cryptonewsalerts.net if you're listening to the pod right now. Let's dive into this 86,000 target. Uh, for April this month. Then we're going to dive into a 300,000 target from Plan B and then a 650,000 up prediction from on chain analyst Willy Woo. And then we'll dive into some uh, live QA. So here we go. Mixed signals for the biddies. According to some analysis, market exhibits bullish signs with the 200 week and 50 week moving averages at 33.7 and 39.9. Now, I'm going to dive right into the meat and potatoes here or the fruit and veggies as I share for all my vegetarians. He highlights the market sentiment, the fear and greed index at 65, indicating a state of greed amongst market participants. The analyst notes that the current phase of the market cycle is characterized by belief. I believe I can fly. 
anyways. Moreover, miners are still profitable at prices above 41.8 as the mining difficulty rises post having a price spike is always expected. Notably, previous halving events have triggered substantial price rallies with Bitcoin experiencing significant gains of 90x, 30x, and 7x. So yeah, 2012 halving sparked a 90x uh, rise of parabola. Uh, then in uh, 2020 halving, we saw a 30x. And then in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, so 2012 was 90x, 2016 30x. And then of course, 2020 was more modest with 7x, but not too shabby. And importantly, Bitcoin has never returned to having prices after these rallies. And examining seasonality trends, the monthly ongoing price of April stands at 71 Gs, suggesting a positive outlook for the month. The average gain for April is estimated at 22%, implying an end of the month target of 86 Five, according to the analysts. Let me know if you think Bitcoin can end the month here, having month this April within the next couple of weeks by the time of the Hong Kong ETFs going live with a bitty price of 86.5. Let me know in the chat. Moreover, the period from April 16th to the 30th has historically seen average gains of almost 15%, further reinforcing positive expectations and further price gains for Bitcoin during the upcoming weeks. The analyst says this time frame could attract investors seeking to buy the dip BTFD family, you already know. And despite the overall positive outlook, Bitcoin is trading currently above what we at 64. We bounced back pretty spectacularly. And the current local high is still sitting at 73.7, which we tapped mid-March uh, about a month ago. Moreover, in its quest for new highs and surpassing 80,000, Bitcoin has encountered a significant obstacle at the 70,000 level. Despite surpassing its all-time high, Bitcoin has struggled to consolidate above this level for over a week. Nonetheless, the analyst said the potential Potential synergy between the success of the ETF market in the U.S. and the upcoming halving event may hold a key to revitalizing Bitcoin's price trajectory. So send it and let's freaking go. But anyways, fam, let's keep it moving. Let's dive into this 300,000 prediction from Plan B, uh, creator of the stock to flow model. Here, contrary to the general belief circulating in crypto, Bitcoin stock to flow. Model creator analyst Plan B thinks this having will not be different from previous events, according to a tweet, and we'll look at that tweet. Plan B insists the Bitcoin price increases will be again around the having. Uh, reading his tweet here, let me just refresh. Bada boom, bada bing. In my opinion, this Bitcoin having will be no different. All Bitcoin price increase will again be around the halving. Buying 6 million before the halving and selling 18 million after the halving, which you can see here in the green line, will outperform buying and holding. Uh, Bitcoin greater than 100,000 in 2024 and a Bitcoin top greater than 300,000 per Bitcoin in 2025. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Now, over the past week, several analysts and members of the crypto community expressed uncertainty about the effect of the upcoming halving event, which would have on Bitcoin and its price value. This uncertainty stems from Bitcoin reaching a new all-time high a month before the halving, which is unprecedented, meaning it's never happened before. Previous cycles, Bitcoin's all-time high usually comes after the halving, as the Bitcoin supply and production rate slow down due to the event slashing the minor block rewards by 50%. However, high demand from the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs launched in January pushed the price action past this November 2021 high of 69 G's, baby, to a new peak of 73.7 mid-March, again, one month ago. At this point, it remains unclear how much Bitcoin will rally after the halving and if the assets gains will be substantial compared to the previous events. Quick shout out to Farshad. He just uh, sent a super and wrote Bitcoin over 100,000 by July 4th, 2024. Best believe, I believe, I believe. Uh, thank you, family, and thanks for supporting the channel. Plan B has remained adamant in his stance about Bitcoin's price trajectory and insists that crypto, the king crypto, will surge to 100,000 this year after the halving and then topping 300,000 per coin next year in 2025. It appears his followers share the same view as a poll he released on X last month, disclosed 71.9% of the participants expect Bitcoin to hit $100,000 this year in 2024. Let me know if you agree with that sentiment uh, in the live chat. Now, to strengthen his claims that all price increases will take place around the halving, uh, Plan B explained that buying Bitcoin six months before the event and selling the asset 18 months after will outperform buying and holding Bitcoin. Traders are likely to make more gains if they sell their holdings a year after the halving as per Plan B's analysis. And responding to a comment on Bitcoin outperforming gold for the bull cycle, the stock to flow creator said, the crypto asset would take out gold because it would become twice as scarce as 
as the precious metal. His predictions align with that of the crypto exchange Bybit, which reported that Bitcoin stock to flow ratio would double to 112 post having while that of gold remains at 60. Meanwhile, Plan B said his Bitcoin uh, at 300,000 top prediction and his low is 250,000 to the one million dollar range. And it remains to be seen if Bitcoin will go higher. So there you have it. The stock to flow printed the first red bullish uh, signal on the stock to flow chart that was March 1st, as we've been covering here on the show. Typically, each cycle will get maybe eight to 12 red dots. That means we're at the bottom of the first inning of this bull cycle, meaning we're just getting started. So you already know, but now it's time to dive into our feature story of the day and discuss the $650,000 Bitcoin price prediction. So let's break it down, shall we? Headline reads, Bitcoin will run to 650,000 if the bulls take charge. That's right. Even with Bitcoin prices facing pressure from the sellers, on-chain analyst Willie Wu thinks Bitcoin will reach new highs thanks to the launch of the new Bitcoin ETFs. In a recent post on X, Willie Wu said the coin can soar as high as 91000 in a bear market bottom, but soar to as high as $650,000 in a bull market top. Send it. However, do note Bitcoin will only sort of these mega valuations, assuming that the leading asset managers will fully deploy their recommended allocations to the world's most valuable crypto asset. Now, at the spot rates, Bitcoin looks shaky even after the surge to all time highs of 73,800 mid March, which was last month. Uh, Bitcoin has been seen under pressure, obviously. So far, prices are within a range. These are capped at 73,8, which is the all time high on the upper end, and around now 59,700 on the lower end, which we just tapped yesterday. So as long as the prices are inside the zoom, the uptrend remains, or the zone, my bad. This preview considers the formation established in the better part of quarter one of this year after the first Bitcoin ETFs in the U.S., were officially approved. I mean, look at this chart. This is the daily chart, fam. This is the tail of the tape. And the analysts also noted that the rise to 91,000 and 650,000 are long-term targets and not for this current market cycle necessarily. But most importantly, Willie Wu added, it will depend on how fast and aggressively asset managers like BlackRock add Bitcoin to their diversified portfolios. And even so, this projection excludes inflows from non-custodial wallets. Capital flows from these wallets are projected to be higher due to the rising crypto adoption. So yeah, this prediction is solely based upon the institutions allocating a certain percentage of their assets under management into Bitcoin. It ignores the retail, the nation state adoption, the sovereign wealth fund adoption, and all the other bullishness in the market. So keep that in mind. Now, in Wu's assessment, asset managers manage around a hundred trillion dollars globally. So if they decided to invest just 2% of their holdings in Bitcoin, as Fidelity recommends, the asset can receive around 2 trillion. Now, additionally, considering Bitcoin's value based on on-chain movement worth around 560 billion, the total investment will reach 2.56 trillion. So using the market value to realize value, which is the NVRV ratio, Wu said Bitcoin could soar to a market high of 650,000 per Bitcoin in a bull cycle. Now the NVRV is a metric that compares market capitalization to on-chain investment. Conversely, Bitcoin can reach a swing low of 91,000 per Bitcoin if the crypto the market crushes. The NVRV ratio is typically 5x in bull market tops and 0.7x in bear market bottoms. So Wu thinks Bitcoin like gold is ready for a 12-year bull run. I've also heard Michael Saylor say we're in a 10-year bull run. So even so, adoption and emerging regulations in Europe and Asia will shape the path to 91 and 650 thousand dollars. So there you have it. Crypto fam, I want to know your personal prediction for this cycle peak. And by what year do you think we're most likely to reach the cycle peak? Will it be this year, 2024? Will it be next year, 2025? How high will we climb? What can you see? Please do let me know and share it in the chat. I predict Bitcoin low of 222,000, which is my bear scenario, and a Bitcoin high, which is my bull scenario of 750,000, somewhere in between there. I think we hit it in 2025 
personally. Now we have a lot of bullishness in the market. I mean, I've been covering it each and every day in the show as this is a daily live stream. So I don't want to reiterate myself because I had a very passionate uh, rant yesterday and virtually every day when we end the show before we tap into the live Q&A, I tell you all the reasons why I'm bullish. The obvious reasons, I'll just share some of it with you here now. The obvious reasons is supply demand, right? When you have massive demand and a very limited supply and a having looming, what's going to happen? I I believe 12 to 18 months after the halving, we hit a cycle peak, which would mean in 2025, as history has shown us from the previous halving cycles. Now, when you have massive institutional demand, it means supply shock. Supply shock incoming. I can see the supply shock happening this year. There's only 1.8 million Bitcoin roughly available on the exchanges. And I've heard, uh, according to on-chain analysts, over 80% of the current Bitcoin supply is in the hands of the long-term hodlers. So what happens when all the Bitcoin on the exchanges dry up? Bitcoin sells at a premium. Numbers go up because BlackRock is going to have to continue to fulfill the demand for their customers, right? Fidelity, the same thing, and all the rest of them. MicroStrategy is not slowing down anytime soon, right? BlackRock, definitely not slowing down. Fidelity, not slowing down. Now we have ETFs about to be launched out of Hong Kong. We've got ETFs going to be launched uh, potentially out of Australia, El Salvador. There's just so much bullishness. We have Mr. 100 now collectively has over 60,000 Bitcoin purchasing roughly over 100 Bitcoin per day. Uh, Max Kaiser says his... Uh, Top candidate for who Mr. 100 is, is Abu Dhabi in the UAE. We have the Middle East, all the oil money. We have the Saudis in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We got Qatar. They're sitting on a half a, a, half a trillion dollar uh, sovereign wealth fund. Uh, you have places like uh, Iran. You got the BRICS movement. You got Russia opening up the Bitcoin mining hub in Ethiopia. Can you say bullish? I mean, how can you not be bullish at a time like this when you start to truly fathom, like reflect, meditate, and truly understand how limited this asset class is? 21 million, finite limited supply, no corrupt government can change that, right? No corrupt politician, no corrupt regulator, no corrupt anybody can change it because it's incorruptible. It's Perfect money. For the first time in human history, we have perfect money that can't be inflated, like the US dollar. They're guaranteed to continue to print to try to get out of the deficit, in which is impossible to get out of. Money printer will continue to go, Brr. money will continue being laundering, laundered, uh, you know, to fund wars because that's what fiat does best. You know what I mean? Fiat currency perpetuates war and violence. Bitcoin perpetuates peace and love. El Salvador being the perfect example. Now there is a blueprint. Bukele laid out the blueprint. Print. Now, any other nation can follow in their footsteps. So you already know. Let me know your thoughts, family.